Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, and this video we're breaking down Three Body Problem. The new Netflix show presents a threat for humanity that, at that point, is the biggest one we've ever faced. But there's very little we actually know about the enemy, and in this video, that's what I want to discuss. This will go over what the Santi really look like, and also what happens in the war. I will save that until the end of the video though, and give you a heads up right before we get to it. Obviously heavy spoilers ahead, and this will cover things from the book that haven't happened in the series yet. So if you don't want to know, then be aware your bugs, and if you're joining me, then use your brain and hit the thumbs up. With out of the way, thank you for clicking this, now let's get into three body problem. Okay, so the Sunti go by a different name in the book where they're known as the Trisolarans. Solar of course means sun and Tri means three which ties into the universe they come from. Still though, we learn very little about them and don't even know what they really look like. They look like us? We don't look anything like this. What do you really look like? You wouldn't like it. And that paints out something eerie about them and obviously you're gonna want to know. Though we don't get a physical description in the three main books, we do get a pretty major one in the spin-off. That is called Redemption of Time which deals with multiple dimensions and the dangers of the universe. Now though this wasn't written by the same author, it was signed off by him as being a sequel. Some fans have argued whether this is canon or not, but I think due to it being co-signed we can at least use it as an accurate description. There's also the fact that one of the characteristics from the main books also backs up the description and thus I think it's probably how they'll appear in the show. Now though your first thought might go to them being towering giants, they're actually in fact the opposite. They're described as being no larger than a grain of rice and actually resembling water bears. This is how they're able to build microscopic computers and also why they get off calling everybody bugs. It's thought that they're actually projecting and making fun of humanity because that's how they feel about themselves. It's also why they didn't want to go into combat with the humans as we'd end up smashing them with even our thumbs, like the like button. I do that joke a lot because it reminds you to click. Either way, this is why they tried all different manner of warfare instead of engaging us in a full on assault. They tried misinformation and intimidation to get us to turn on one another and to also limit human understanding. Because of the vastness of space, they knew humanity's technological advancements would exceed theirs by the time that they got here. Thus they've done whatever they can to hamper us, which is how the show starts off. Now they of course are desperate to save their species and escape the chaos of the eras at home like you, like you disable your Disney Plus account. So they're not all good jokes to be fair. Now the fact that they dehydrated was also another clue to their size and this is why I think their size is canon. In nature, small creatures and insects are able to do this which also explains how the Trisolarans can as well. Now, there's only one character in the source material who ever saw them face to face and that was whose brain got sent into space. But I'm not a rapper. They ended up getting him and reconstructing his body and at this point it was when he laid his eyes on them. Seeing small compartments the size of matchboxes and tiny tubes as corridors, it was at this point he realised they were bugs. So it's like when you say these videos are shit and then you make one yourself mate and you look fucking stupid. Anyway, projecting myself there, but the next thing I want to talk about is how he managed to defeat them. Now it's clear that they want to scare humanity into silence, and this is for a reason that we're yet to encounter. This primarily is touched upon in Dark Forest, which is the second book in the main trilogy. That describes the universe as well, a dark forest in which life runs the risk of being exterminated. This ties into the Fermi Paradox, which is something that the series also greatly explores. It's theorised that the universe should be teeming with life, and yet the entire cosmos seems to be completely silent. But now we've discovered over a thousand planets out there around stars. The remarkable thing, Kepler has been looking just at a little piece of sky to, to do a kind of a survey, a tiny piece of sky, and it found six Earth-like planets. So these are rocky planets in the right zone around the star, so the temperature's right, so there could be oceans and rivers. And if you just then extend that over the entire sky, the number now people are talking about is 20 billion Earth-like planets that could have a life in the Milky Way. 20,000 million other Earths. But what is really worrying observation to me actually is that we've looked a bit for radio signals and we look out for signs of anything out there in, in our galaxy, intelligence. And we don't see anything at all. And astronomers call it the Great Silence. It's kind of an ominous name. Because it seems there's so many planets, 20 billion potentially Earth-like planets in the Milky Way. And you think there's loads of room, and then loads of time, so there should be things out there. Now it's thought that the way the universe works is that a world advances to a certain point and then it heads out into the stars. 
However, the universe is like a dark forest, and this said species must become like a hunter. Amongst the darkness, they could encounter other planets filled with life that are also highly advanced. It's saw that they don't know if that civilization will be hostile, and thus it's best to wipe them out before they can advance to a certain point. Sure, they may just want to be mates, but can you really take that chance against another life form? Potentially, they might also spot you, and they might start to think that you're hostile too. So they might attempt to kill you first, and thus the universe is like a dark forest. Every species is moving throughout it, trying to remain undetected to the other threats that are out there. Now, we also see in the series how sending out a message puts us in the crosshairs of the Santi. Had that message not been sent into space, then we never would have encountered the invasion. It's also important to bear in mind that the Santi can read each other's thoughts instantly, and this is why they haven't learned deceit. Humans can hide what we're thinking from others, and it's not something that they possess. This is why they start to see us as an enemy, but they also want us to hide in the dark forest. Now, this is why the Santi say they want us to learn fear again, because they're worried we could attract other attention. It's thought that there's other highly advanced races out there that we don't even encounter in the work. Still though, the theory is that they have one of two options and a civilization can remain hidden and darken their world to the universe. This will mean that no one can see it and they won't send any communication out from where they live. This theoretically will protect them and make sure they don't catch the eyes of higher beings. Now this is done through lowering the speed of light around the solar system which will create a black domain. This will trap the species forever, but also mean that that species gets to survive. Now the other option is to go into space like a hunter and destroy any other life forms that they come across. This again is what the Santi are worried about, and yet it's why they say that they're going to make the Earth feel fear again. We've been too outreaching in what we've done, and yeah, NASA, mate, I'm, I'm going to need you to call that pro back, mate. Stop bloody sending it. Now that's now that now that was all obviously sent out because we're, we're under the assumption that other life will be friendly when it's probably more likely to be just like us. We attack others preemptively and try to stop things before they start, which is probably a mentality that others would have for us. The Santi are aware that we could be flagging ourselves to other races, and this is why they want us to shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck up. Guys, I forgot to add in the spoiler alert saying that I was going to spoil the end of the book and how the Santi end up losing. Um, I've just realised we're, we're uploading it right now, um, so panic in a bit. Don't want to spoil it, so here is your spoiler warning. From here on out, we will spoil how the war ends and lots of things that might ruin the book for you, so I've added it in. Please, please leave me alone, I didn't spoil it. Now in the end, this is what ends up defeating them because we kind of cut off our nose despite our face. We send out a signal pointing to the Trisolarian planet and it's then destroyed by some unknown higher ranking life form. The ship travelling towards us then changes course because it knows we've just given away exactly where we are. That's the last we hear of the ship, with the second Armada also never meeting up with it. It's saw that they encountered something out in space that also ended up wiping them out. The signal Earth sent out and traced back to us and the entire solar system is destroyed. That ends what's thought of human civilization, though there are people in the universe that do go on surviving. So yeah, pretty depressing, and when you think about it, absolutely terrifying. There could be life forms out in the universe right now actively hunting for planets like us they can exterminate. I think it all ties back to that bug mentality and how we can be stamped out just like them. We are a higher life form than most insects on the planet and we're able to wipe them out with ease. That's some of these higher species could do to us and when you get down to it, it's complete horror. Now I want to give a massive shout out to Quinn's Ideas, who videos I've been binging since watching the show. Guys done some absolutely incredible breakdowns in the book and I highly recommend that you go and check them out. Slowly becoming one of my favourite channels and Quinn does outstanding work on sci-fi. So yeah, go watch them and if you like this video, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. Please drop a like on the video and if you want to support the channel as a member of the Spoiler Society, then please click the join button. Get early access to videos every week and it goes such a long way to helping us out. Now if you want some else to watch, you've got a breakdown of the ship scene on screen right now in which we go over all the subliminal horror and what the nanofibers can do in real life. Lots of things to unpack from it. My jaw's still on the floor, along with the rest of me that got sliced up. So yeah, lots and lots to check out, so go watch it after this. Without the way, thanks for sticking through the video. I've been your host, Paul, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.